these goal scorers, they have a, a certain mentality that uh, divides them from, from all the others. So they have to be selfish at some point in the games. They have to be super confident. They, they have this hunger for, for goal and it can only be satisfied when they score. As Greta, feeding Lukaku. That's what he's all about. Welcome home. Romelu is a very impressive personality because he genuinely thinks about the team, how he can help. He's a very natural leader. He speaks to everybody in the group, very open-minded guy, so big fun to work with. Romelu Lukaku is back. His long-awaited very return natural to leader. Bridge, he speaks to everybody in, in the group, race. very open-minded guy, so big fun season. to work with. We need Romelu to adapt Lukaku to him. This game is about His connections. Very handsome guy who already connects with everybody. Well. He's not a very open-minded guy. Learn how to bring him into position and when, and we are on it. For me, he's a tactical genius. There are not many like him at all. The way he sets his team up, what he can do, the flexibility at times. Of course, he gets it wrong, and we saw that against Man City at Stamford Bridge. That was the wrong call. Jesus turning and scoring. Champions of Europe nil, champions of England one. It could have been defended better. But more often than not, he gets it right. He has solid foundations, or always had. He could change a lot. But I think his team will still be very, very good tactically because that's why he does. He's, a, he's an incredible coach, I think. We showed a good reaction and uh, had a good spirit and a good quality throughout the whole match against Southampton. This was our old Chelsea back. Just looking to turn the screw now, Chelsea. Mounts. And Lukaku! Oh, oh astonishing! As Pilaqueta also hit the ball. You know they're going to be the best defence in the country, that's what they are. So I think he's just with the ball, with being able to click when it matters, having those, that variety, you know they're going to be the best defence in the country, the that's what they are. They were my favourite before, so I think he's just with the ball, still are. But being able to have to show when it matters, having those, that variety, you know they're going to be the best defence in the country, that's what they are. They were my favourite before, so I think he's just with the ball, still are. But being able to have to show when it matters, having the that variety, you know the type of the best thing that you can see. They were my favorite before they think he's just not the ball. But being able to have to show when it matters, having the that variety, you know the type of the best thing that you can see. They were my favorite before they think he's just not the ball. But being able to have to show when it matters, having the that variety, you know the type of the best thing. My favorite before so I think he's just not the ball. Give it a go. But being able to have to show when it matters, having the that variety, you know the type of the best thing. My favorite before I think he's just not the ball. Give it a go. But being able to have to show when it matters. My favorite before I think he's just not the ball. But being able to have to show when it matters. We are here this weekend in California. This weekend in California at the home of USC's football team. We're outside the iconic Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum for our first fan fest in nearly two years. An entire weekend to celebrate you, the American Premier League fan. NBC Sports and the Premier League teamed up to bring hundreds of fans to the West Coast so they could celebrate their love for the English top flight. It was the Chelsea fans who were first through the door this morning here in LA. They were the ones who got up at two or three o'clock in the morning. And Chelsea set the fan festival the alight on Saturday here in LA. Seven they goals past struggling Norwich. Mason Mount, what a lovely ball. Rhys James. And Chelsea what a set the fan festival the alight on Saturday. Oh, that's picture book. Loftus cheek. And Mason Mount's hat trick. Seventh heaven. Across the weekend, there were plenty of special guests in attendance, including Premier League record goal scorer Alan Shearer, and he met up with a very special Newcastle fan. I love Newcastle. I, I moved out. And it was, a, it was something that was special to you. Well done.
done. Yeah. Thank you. And it was a, it was something that was special to you with your grandma, am I right? Yeah, yeah. My uh, my mom or well, my grandma, but she raised me. But yes, um, yeah. She uh, she started watching the matches while I was living out there because she wanted to see me in the stands. And then she would start asking me questions about football and and about Newcastle and everything like that. And I'd call her all excited after the matches. And then and I moved back home. We we, we watched matches together. And she became a diehard Jordy as well. And and um, up until you know, unfortunately, she passed away this year. But um, she'd be buzzing off all of this. I'm I'm, I'm getting so emotional. Uh, well I can't. done. She'd be yeah. ever so proud of you. Well done. Yeah, yeah. Sure, she would. You are. You're just good. You're everything. You're the well, goat. I love you so much. I appreciate that. Well, as, a, as a thank you and such a great story, I brought a Newcastle top and a signed top for you. Oh, well, my God. Thank, oh, you. thank you so much. Thank you for all your support. Well done. Thank you. What a wonderful gesture. And that is a Premier League with shade. Thank you so much for coming. Speechless. I'm honestly speechless. Well this is the best day of my life. Uh, after the takeover. After the takeover. <laughs> On day two, the American fans were left stunned by the result in the final game of the weekend. Before that match, they were treated to a special message. Hello, LA. Not live, but you are live. You are sitting, standing, lying, whatever, there in the morning in LA and waiting for the big first whistle of one of the biggest games in the world. Unfortunately, I have to mention Man United first because they play at home, but hopefully that's the last time they will be first today. We will give our absolutely everything to make you happy. The good thing is, when you are happy, I'm happy. So, easy. So, we give absolutely everything and I hope you are in a great mood and you support us. If you think we cannot hear you, you are wrong. I tell the boys that there are 10,000 crazy people in LA cheering and shouting and, I don't know, being just crazy for us. And it will give us, hopefully, the decisive boost. Robertson fiddled it through for Jota, and there's Momo Salah. It is four. It is four for Liverpool at Old Trafford. It's astonishing. Henderson nicks it. Jota's one way, Salah's the other. He's on his Old Trafford hat trick here, Mo Salah. The man is extraordinary. That picture will be framed and kept forever by Liverpool fans all over the world. Tim, you played for the club, and I, I know you talk, talked about Roy Keane pulling you to the side yeah. and saying, the biggest game we play is against Liverpool. Yes. How can you have a performance like that today when that kind of rivalry is in, in the club's biggest And, and Robbie, yes, that's where the question marks come. At home against your fiercest rival. That can't happen. You can get beat, that happens. But in the fashion they got beat, players getting sent off, not getting around the pitch and working. Listen, Liverpool worked harder than them. We saw that today. That's unacceptable. What a day it's been. There is absolutely no doubt the growth of this game in this country and the importance of it to every gets it. Arnold Schwarzenegger. The amount of millions of people that get entertained every time they watch a soccer game is extraordinary. The amount of joy it brings to the people, the ups and the downs. The other side of it is, is that the amount of great inspiration that the soccer players bring. I'm so happy that they had the chance to have this trophy under my office here in Santa Monica in Los Angeles. This is fantastic. Hasta la vista and I'll be back. If we want, this could be a real special day, if we want. And when I sit here in four years, I think we won one title in this time. So I'm a totally normal guy. Um, I'm the normal one, maybe, if you want this. <laughs> Seems to be longer ago than six years because so many things happened since then. Alana aimed at Benteke, came down for Scott, wow! He has lashed it Seems to be... with a bolt against the Blues, out of the blue. And deep into injury time, Sadio Mane has probably won the derby for Liverpool. And in both half stoppage time, Genie White Allen scores the goal that could be priceless. Salah! What the man! Catastrophic for Pickford, Manic for Klopp. 
Firmino's on his way, and he's just kept dancing, and he's put Liverpool in front in a flash. Alexander Arnold takes, oh, it's gone in! Sadio Mane! And this is why they are looking like champions. What a hit! Oh, what a hit! Alexander Arnold brilliantly hit. Jürgen Klopp, a smiling, effervescent 48-year-old German who elevated Borussia Dortmund to the very top of the European game. He takes charge of Liverpool for the very first time. I remember that day really well. I got a, a, a picture of myself on that day on the sideline from my garden, our owner. After the game, like first match, first birthday or whatever match for Liverpool. Since then, we had a few more, and it was the start for something really special. It's much better than I ever could have expected it or imagined it. Um, that's absolutely true. But um, I didn't really think that far. When you arrive at a football club, you you try to um, to find a way um, to get in the club and get through all the, the different things you have to sort over a day. So my days when I arrived here were from eight o'clock in the morning to and in the office, at least eight o'clock to eight o'clock at night, um, with doing an, only one hour training or one and a half hour training. All the rest was just things I, I had to adapt to and try to learn and as quick as possible. It's a nice story, but um, it's not over yet. And um, we are still in a pretty competitive mood. Jürgen Klopp has made his mark. I didn't have to change. I improved, obviously. That's clear because of plenty of challenges. I never expected to have them. So to sort them, to find a solution for them, that makes you a better manager. That's how it is. I never would or could have done it alone, but by, with my coaches, with all the stuff here, we created a really nice atmosphere at, at, at Liverpool. So we do it for each other here. We know we do it for our supporters, of course, but it's really important here as well. I think in this environment, 98% uh, of the people are massive LFC supporters, and um, that's nice. It's really nice to have them around and try to help them to, yeah, achieve their dreams. Um, their dreams and the dreams of the people and dreams of the players, my dreams. Obviously he's a bit more mature maybe, he's older and maybe with that comes a little bit more disability to maybe take a step back a bit more. Maybe he's not as just as passionate as he was when he just arrived and maybe a bit less pressure than when he arrived and there was so much work to do in terms of rebuilding the team, even rebuilding a club to be fair. Then now that side has, has been done. We thankfully improved a lot. Other teams improved, unfortunately, <laughs> as well. Since I'm here, pretty much City is the, the dominant force in the, in, in, in the league, and we try to catch up. If we look at rebuilding a squad without the, the financial power that a PSG or a Man City or a Chelsea have, or even a Man United to a certain extent, and I understand he doesn't do all the scouting, of course he doesn't. But I think it's that synergy between him, Michael Edwards, the scouting team, the recruitment team, all of that. But with club at the end saying, okay, this is, this is what I need. Uh, and if you can't get him, for me, if you go down to the second choice on the list, for example, or the third choice, okay, I'll make sure that I can make this player into the player that I wanted originally. Maybe I didn't get, but I will, I'm gonna make him this world-class player. We were close enough, so imagine we would have been champion the year before we, won a, uh, we became champion. That would have been absolutely crazy. Then we would have won, won the league twice and the Champions League once and worked another time in the Champions League final. So we know we didn't do that bad, but um, obviously the, the quality is meanwhile absolutely insane in this league. Um, obviously a lot of really good managers here um, and top. Yeah, meanwhile, probably the best players in the world are more or less all in, in England. And that's quite impressive. And that causes us problems <laughs> every week. Um, but we try to, to figure a way out to get through that. And um, so far, more often than not, um, it worked out for us. Lovely take from Elliot. Moved on for Alexander Arnold. Now Sadio Mane! He has crushed it in! 
Wave. I'm a different manager today. Five million more experiences, and that's how it is. So many things happened here. We had to go through tougher moments, and we're allowed to celebrate incredible moments as well. And everybody spoke about when my sixth year anniversary was, and um, then I saw the picture when I arrived here. Wow, that's a big difference. It's actually because of life and work here. We are here, we, um, we like it here, and we want to stay here. He's this kind of manager that, both in terms of my management and my relationship with you as a player, and my relationship with you as, a, as, as the tactical guy here, is gonna make you improve, make this team improve. And for me, this is where, this is where the genius is. He's that he can almost take anyone, not, me, not anyone, but he can take players who are not Messi or Ronaldo and make of that a, an incredible team. And I think this is a very, very special skill. We can give each team in the world a proper game. On our day, we can beat everybody. That's the truth. That was not the case when I came here. And that's what we are doing. We are constant in this, in this mood. We want to go for the next. We start with nearly becoming champion or going to the Champions League final, which was an exciting run to go there. Then nearly becoming champion, but for 11 inches or centimeter or whatever it was. But then winning the Champions League, a year later winning the league. And then the year later we get the biggest knock in the world football injury wise. Losing all center halves is a massive challenge. And we placed, we still played Premier League. We couldn't change the league to a week on. We had to play Premier League. And we were still Liverpool, the team who won the league the year before. Everybody wants to beat you. And getting through that and ending up at third is for me the next step in that. We, we ended up at third could qualify for the Champions League. That was very, very positive because of the character of 